As the unknown courier emerges back into the desolate post-apocalyptic wasteland of the Mojave Desert, they are sent on a quest to find who tried to kill them and stop them from making a crucial delivery. During their journey, they would go on to encounter the many different factions who roam the lands and run the New Vegas Strip. The NCR being one of the biggest factions within the land, try to form law and order on all of the citizens of the wasteland, whereas the Great Khans, for example, try and do the opposite, focusing on raids and killing all of the settlements around them. However, there is one other faction which is almost as big as the NCR, but terrifying to encounter. This deadly force is quite primitive in terms of technology, and compared to the NCR, don't have as good an arsenal for battle. That, however, doesn't stop them from killing hundreds in their way and burning villages to the ground if they go against their word. This faction is known as the Kaisar's Legion, a large group of settlers who are massively inspired by the culture of the old Roman army from 2000 years ago. Led by their ruler known as Kaisar, the Legion would massively oppose the NCR's rule and would see the world around them as rightfully theirs, not allowing anyone to take it from them. But where did this faction come from? Why are they so inspired by Roman society? What is their society structure like and what is their their ultimate goal within the Mojave Desert and for America. Well in this video we look into the terrifying and brutal faction that will crucify you if you go against their will. This is the lore behind the fallout out faction known as Kaisar's Legion. The year is 2246 and it has been over 130 years since the events of the Great War. Survivors of the surface have started to rebuild and a lot of the vaults have started to open back up, allowing those who had survived their harsh experiments to see the surface once again and try to rebuild the America that was before. Before this time, however, an organization was set up called the Followers of the Apocalypse, or just simply the Followers. These were a group of ex-vault dwellers who wanted to spread the word of past events alerting the survivors of the wasteland to the horrors of what happened during the Great War and how America became the way it did. Their ultimate goal was to make sure that humanity didn't make the same mistakes as before and could live in a more harmonious way. Originating within Dayglow, aka what used to be San Diego within New California, the followers moved around quite a bit and eventually went on to set up within the Los Angeles Public Library, making use of everything within it. During their time, they would form short alliances with anyone they could be that the Brotherhood of Steel, the NCR, and any faction they could find, actually influencing a lot of those factions members, meaning that they would take on more individuals. The followers actually were able to grow their numbers, welcoming new recruits that were from the Brotherhood, former members of the Enclave, and again any other faction that found what they had to say extremely interesting. After building up their members and supplies, eventually the followers of the Apocalypse were able to send out regular scholars on expeditions to gather more knowledge, including including information on tribal dialects. However, sending scholars out would lead to the loss of some of their members and the formation of something new. During 2026, the followers sent out a group to make their way towards the Grand Canyon to study the region's tribal languages. The group consisted of three individuals of note, Edward Sallow, Bill Calhoun, a physician, as well as a Mormon missionary, Joshua Graham, who also specialized in tribal dialects. However, on their way, this group would encounter a tribe known as the Blackfoot tribe and was immediately immediately captured and held to ransom. This tribe was brutal in combat, however they currently had a problem. They were at war with seven other tribes, and whilst they could handle themselves in a fight, they really did not have the technical knowledge of how to navigate a battlefield and would be outmatched because of it. They needed leadership and needed to learn the basics of warfare. Salo saw this as an opportunity to save himself and group members and offered to help the Blackfoots against his companion's wishes. Salo was able to give this tribe knowledge in gun maintenance, small unit tactics, military strategy, as well as explosive improvisation. This massively helped the tribe in their war against the other tribes, and because of it, the Blackfoot started to admire and respect Salo, so much in fact that they made him leader almost immediately. Salo seized this opportunity and decided to change his identity. Prior to the followers arriving and meeting the Blackfoot tribe, Salo uncovered a couple of historical books, including the history of the decline and fall of the Roman 
Roman Empire. And uh, and I apologize if I butcher this pronunciation. Commentary di Bello Galeccio by Julius Caesar. Salo became obsessed by these books, studying them relentlessly for two weeks straight, which would ultimately help him when it came to his tactical knowledge when it came to the battlefield. Now leader of the tribe, Salo changed his name to Kaiser after being inspired by these books and how much he admired the Roman Empire. Kaiser made this tribe maintain their firearms, properly shoot targets, and practice their tactical knowledge when in battle. After this intense training, the tribe went to war fighting back against those other tribes that threatened them. First was the tribe known as the Ridgers, the weakest of them. The tribe, however, refused to surrender, but Kaiser didn't hold back and surrounded them, eventually obliterating all of them. The apparent sight of the piles of corpses shocked the other tribesmen who had never seen battles like this before. This wasn't a small battle. This was total warfare. Because of this, both the Kaibabs and the Fredonians surrendered immediately to Kaisar's tribe, which then created a domino effect with all the other tribes. Kaisar then realized something. These tribes had an identity crisis. They were all split up, and that was causing too much division, making progress way too difficult. He realized that the only option was to unify all of them and create a monolithic culture. Forging all the tribes together into one force, Kaisar began invading other tribes all over the region, forming them into his one society. Fighting against these tribes was easy as all of them were extremely primitive using basic tools to fight their battles. Kaisar's forces were just too advanced compared. By 2250, Kaisar and his army had taken over southeastern Utah, southwestern Colorado, the western edge of New Mexico, and the northern half of Arizona. His army was now vast and because of it, he was able to rename it and claim it to be its own unique faction. Here, Kaisar declared himself as the Son of Mars, the Roman god of war, and his massive force was known as the Great Tribe, the Legion. Graham stayed with Kaiser through this and became the Legion's first legate, a high-ranked soldier that was solely appointed by Kaiser himself. The year is 2255 and the Legion is grand in scale, under the clear rule of Kaiser. Their forces are battle-hardened with tons of training and it was time for them to spread their rule again and take over the rest of the regions around them. Kaisar was massively inspired by the rule of Julius Caesar, obviously, and everything he read about within the Roman Empire books he aspired to. His overall ideology for the Legion was really simple. It was to survive and bring about long-term stability, no matter the cost. With the Legion, he wanted to basically do exactly what the Roman Empire did, take over territories, learn about their cultures, and forge them into one grand Legion. Doing this, by Kaisar's logic, was the best way to rebuild the post-apocalyptic society of of America. To fully do this, Kaiser believed that there had to be a clear society value, which was enforced by nationalism and a culture that obliterated the unique identities of individuals. There was no value in individuality. It only hindered their progress. Everyone had to work for the state and be simply an instrument of war and production. If they went against this ideology, they would be cast out and most likely crucified. Personal sacrifice was key and fit with the gods that Kaiser believed in. Most importantly, Mars, or I guess his father, if he's believing he's the son of Mars. Because of this, it meant that the only way they could seed in their journey and quest was by sacrificing blood and life on the battlefield. Because of this logic, the Legion would never bring in robots or machinery into their ranks. These creatures could not bleed for their society, and because of it was seen as useless for their cause. Only human warriors could be sacrificed, and gadgets were not true warriors, and would lead to bloodless victories. On top of that, stem packs and other chems were massively forbidden, as they weren't true to human abilities. Once again, this was an accessory that wouldn't allow for sacrifice. If a warrior went to battle and they were injured fatally, they would have to accept that injury as the blood spilled was for the good of their society. Honestly, the Legion had the ideology of survival of the fittest. If you could not fight as a man, you were useless and should be put down unless you had the skill. If you required medical attention all the time, you were not strong. The best soldiers within the Legion were those who were strong and did not need medical science to 
survive in battle, leading those who did survive to become deadly veteran soldiers who proved themselves in battle time and time again. On top of all this, democracy was massively spat on. In Kaiser's eyes, it simply did not work. It caused division amongst people of the society and meant they could not focus on the bigger picture. Because of this, a clear hierarchy was put into place to make sure everyone knew their role in society. And if they gave enough for it, they would be promoted or praised, almost like every military system known across the world, all once again inspired by the culture of the Roman Empire. Kaiser also claims that democracy would lead to corrupt, wealthy individuals and landowners putting greed above everything else, meaning the greater good could not move forward. And oddly enough, he's not wrong in that regard. Moving into the social structure of society, this is where a lot of the outside wastelanders object to the rule of the Legion. Because although their ideas seem extremely brutal, they were able to bring about law and order to some of the more ruthless areas of the country, like Arizona for example. The Legion however had a very segregated society caused by their hierarchy system. Here men and women are separated into their roles. Women are outright forbidden to fight within the military. That is simply not their role within this society. In their eyes of the hierarchy of the Legion, women are simply just caretakers, healers, midwives and breeders, and nothing more. They fulfill the traditional roles of women and in the eyes of Kaiser are essential to help maintain the Legion's continuous campaign of expansion. Priestesses are some of the most important roles within society. These women raise children taken from their parents and raise them to Kaiser's doctrine and ideologies. There is this idea that a lot of male members of society are extremely misogynistic and have a somewhat disdain for women, and that can be seen when speaking to some of the members of the Legion. However, for the most part, this segregation is not because of disdain, but mainly to enhance production. Women give birth so that is their role, end of discussion. That is why in the Legion's eyes they are separated from the men. It's simply to maximise their population increase, and especially when they cannot fight, it means their society is constantly reproducing new potential soldiers for future battles and expansion. Of course, because of this logic, it also means that homosexuality is forbidden within society. To Kaiser, it doesn't help progress their society and only hinders the Legion. Anyone found to be homosexual would be heavily punished and most likely killed. In their eyes, they are weak. With the men within society, their role is simple. They are the warriors and nothing more. When fighting for Kaiser, they have no rights at all. The only choice they can make is where and when they die for him. They can advance up the ranks, but most of the time, their experience doesn't make much difference. Whilst they can get better weapons and armor as they fight on, most of the time they are just there to fight until they eventually die and then get discarded by the Legion to make room for the next line of soldiers, as is the lessons of the Cult of Mars, the religion of the Legion. Soldiers within the Legion are made up of men born into the Legion, or any able-bodied men who have been enslaved by the Legion. This makes their expansion into new regions really important as it meant that they were able to get access to new soldiers, ones they honestly couldn't care less about, and if they died, it meant their blood was spilled, meaning victory was certain. And speaking of slaves, the Legion is founded on slaves. Everyone they captured is put to use in society. If they have a certain skill, it will be put to use, and if they are weak, cannot fight and have no skills, they will just be discarded. Everything within the Legion is about using everything around them, and every person they encounter will be captured and put to use after passing the initial tests. So if you get captured within the Wasteland, you will first be called Captures. If you have a specific skill, you will be doing that for the Legion. Or if you are just a healthy male, you will be sent to work or be put on the front line whether you like it or not. Some who are seen as unfit for combat duty as a Legionnaire are are expected to adhere to their master without question and are put into rags, their name is changed and a giant bright red X painted over their chest, with some having slave collars on them at all times to make sure they don't escape. With that said however, those that live under Kaiser's rule claim that he is actually a caring lord that doesn't like to get involved unless someone causes trouble within society. In fact, a lot of people quite like living under his rule as it is better than living within the chaotic wasteland. 
The Legion is extremely organized with its own religion, set roles, clear structure, its own currency, and strict roles that help society to progress forward. Whilst it is completely brutal to outsiders and goes against any modern views of life, to a lot of its societal members, it's a safe haven away from the deadly wasteland run by raiders, bandits, and other factions of note. The Legion has a goal, and that is to constantly expand and bring about their ideals to the wasteland of America. However, moving into the 2270s, Kaiser encountered a problem. A rival faction known as the NCR, the New California Republic, were controlling the heart of New Vegas and stopping the Legion's expansion and assimilation of America's regions. Kaiser could not have this go on. It was time for the Legion to go to war against the NCR. By 2271, the New California Republic had noticed the Legion was taking over regions at an incredible pace. Their society was utilizing slaves taken from all over the land, and villages had been burnt to the ground as their forces were quickly moving through. The NCR had to do something, and fast. With this, a treaty was signed between the NCR and the Desert Rangers, a deadly group of soldiers who used advanced military gear to take out dangerous threats. The Rangers would be brought into the NCR as some of their highest soldiers with one purpose, to take out the Legion's toughest soldiers and protect the Hoover Dam, the most important landmark within New Vegas. The Legion hit back after this event happened, realizing they needed to better themselves to win this war. Here they moved further into the west of the Mojave Desert and established the base of operations on Fortification Hill overlooking Lake Mead and the Colorado River in the year 2277. With now 87 tribes under their new rule of Kaiser, the Legion made contact with the NCR near New Vegas and began began trying to take the region, utilizing their full force. During this time, Kaiser found the Hoover Dam thanks to the help of Ulysses. Kaiser knew this was a crucial asset to have and began focusing all of his efforts on taking it, claiming it would be his Rubicon to be crossed before taking New Vegas to set it up as his version of Rome. Malpai Legger ordered a direct attack on the NCR troops at the Hoover Dam. The battle saw countless casualties operating on both sides. Witnessing this, General Lee Oliver ordered his troops back to the middle of the dam. They also made sure that when fighting against the Legion Legionnaires and veteran soldiers to try and take them out before they got close to their ranks. If they got close, the Legion's choice in melee weaponry would tear through them and would mean sure defeat. The Legion also changed their tactics up during this battle and enforced their strict tactical strategy of putting the raw recruits up front and veterans at the back. This strategy, however, would be a huge mistake for the Legion. As the battle went ahead, the NCR were able to hold their ground and just pick off the veterans from the back thanks to their sharp shooters. The Legionnaires were grounded and could not move forward to fight back. The Legion commanders were falling in their numbers and they had to hit back. With the ones at the front in panic mode, the veterans pushed through to the front to rush the ridge where the sharpshooters were. However, with the veterans pushing through, this completely went against all tactics and the chain of command was broken, causing confusion all over the Legion's ranks. The veterans did make it through, however, but once they got to the ridge where the sharpshooters were, they had gone. They had moved all the way back to Boulder City, an NCR strong point, but the veterans didn't hold back. They pushed on all the way to Boulder City to locate these sharpshooters. However, once they got there, they realized it was a trap. The first recon and rangers had already pulled out and had set up the city to be a giant trap filled with explosives. Setting this off, all the officers and veterans were wiped out. Without this leadership, the rest of the Legion's forces were now disorganized and disorientated, meaning an easy victory for the NCR forces. Graham, who was in charge of the attack, was punished to show that failure was not an option. Here, Graham was covered in pitch, set ablaze, and thrown into the Grand Canyon. Kaiser was not messing around anymore. However, somehow Graham survived and is able to tell his accounts of the battle of Hoover Dam. After this, Legat Lannis was assigned Graham's role and was sent out eastwards to claim further tribes for Kaiser's force, to allow him to try to take over Hoover Dam again, but this time without failure. After a year of finding new tribes to conquer and assimilate into the Legion, Kaiser now had 14 new tribes back in his forces ready to take out the NCR, take over Hoover Dam, and eventually the New Vegas Strip. The year is now 2282, and the NCR and Legion are in a fierce battle 
battle once again. With clear plans on either side, it seems like both factions are at a deadlock, unable to advance one way or the other. However, there is one hope for both of them, and that is the unknown courier. Through their determinedness and combat abilities, this individual would be able to solve the problem for the factions, leading to the victory for the Legion and their setting up of Rome within New Vegas, or their ultimate defeat, leading to the NCR's control of the region, or even the destruction of both of them. Either way, the Legion's forces have to be admired. They had spread throughout the areas at incredible pace, utilizing pure human force without any real additions of robots, machinery, or drugs to help their cause. They fought with brute strength and were able to unite hundreds of tribes to fight as one unit. No matter what the courier chooses at the second battle of Hoover Dam, everyone will remember the terrifying and brutal strength of Kaisar's Legion and will forever remember their phrase, Ave true to Kaiser. And that is the lore behind the terrifying and brutal faction known as Kaisar's Great Legion. A really fascinating faction of the Fallout universe that depending on what your choices you made in New Vegas could still be out there and it would be great to see them return because they are so unique compared to everyone else within the universe in my opinion. I hope you guys enjoyed this look into their society and how they formed and if you did please leave a comment and a like it would be really appreciated and why not subscribe if you haven't already. Also I'll leave my link Links to my social media in the description below if you want to support me on there as well as my twitch which you can follow if you want to see me do weekly streams it'll be great to say hi to you on there also if you really really do like this content then you can support me as a youtube channel member or as a patron links are also in the description below and speaking of i'd like to thank my patrons real quick big thanks to our big fish do 23 rhino head and ryan garnum our sharks connor and the avp man and our huge megalodons sinus jjd896 well such gaming jacob garcia and arch also big thanks to our youtube channel member our wise one jambu as well as all my subscribers over on twitch all your support means the world to me thank you so so much once again but that is all for now thank you all for watching once again and i shall see you all in the next one cheers